Good evening. This is UN News. I am your anchor, Ryan Sampson. We have been recently made aware of an escalating situation surrounding the ownership of the Senkaku Islands. Overnight, members of the Chinese military parachuted onto the small set of islands and claimed that they are the true owners. As it stands, the small series of islands are presently under control of the Japanese government and have been so for a number of decades. Despite this, there have been numerous attempts from the Chinese to challenge their ownership rights. Some of these actions include public protests, as well as Chinese aircraft invading Senkaku airspace. We will now hear from the pu a public statement from the Chinese official in Shanghai. The People's Republic of China has taken measures to ensure the safety of the Diao Islands. Last night, troops from the People's Liberation Army landed on the island. This military presence is merely defensive precaution. We will guard our land against any aggression, but have no wish to use presence for offensive measure. In addition to soldiers inhabiting the Senkaku Islands, it has been reported that an Argentinian cruise vessel has run aground not too far from the Senkaku Islands. For more on this development, we will now hear from a new UN, UN news reporter that is on the ship. Thank you, Ryan. I'm here aboard the SS Peace, a cruise ship with a distinctly international collection of passengers. Here, I have Alana Morrison, a passenger, to tell us exactly what happened in the early hours of this morning. Well, last night I was having trouble sleeping because I'm so stressed about all these mechanical issues we've been having. So I went out to take a midnight stroll, and I took my binoculars because I wanted to see the ground squirrels that inhabit the Senkaku Islands. They're very famous, you know. Anyways, I was walking about, and all of a sudden I saw these dark shapes in the sky, and I couldn't figure out what they were. Ginormous misshapen birds? What? And then I realized they were paratroopers. This was very, very frightening. And then I was talking to someone else, and they said that the Senkaku Islands are actually in the middle of a huge conflict between the Chinese and the Japanese, and this was probably a Chinese invasion. Oh my goodness, what a chilling and riveting account. Now, tell us, before we go, what's it like to be at the center of a conflict between two of the greatest superpowers of the modern era that could almost certainly result in economic and social destruction? Well, it's nerve-wracking to say the least. I just can't stop thinking about all those people who saw, say, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and then saw World War II unfold before their eyes. What will happen after this? I just hope it's not anything as grand or tragic. The international community must work as quickly as possible. Yes, we all hope that the international community can work very quickly to save us all from certain doom. Back to you, Ryan. We will update you on the situation as it develops. At this time, we will hear from a Japanese official who will speak to us live from Tokyo. Earlier today, the People's Republic of China has landed troops on the Senkaku Islands in an aggressive gesture. Japan cannot uh, and will not uh, ignore such provocation. If the Chinese troops uh, are not immediately removed from the Senkaku Islands, Japan is prepared to respond with any required force. We are now joined live over the telephone from Professor Morris Ferdinand, who will speak to us more on this issue. The Senkaku Islands, as they are known in Japan, or Daioyu Islands, as called in China, are a small group of uninhabited islands in the East China Sea. They are located east of mainland China, northeast of Taiwan, and southwest of Japan. Ownership of the islands has been disputed by the People's Republic of China, the Republic of China, and Japan for decades. In recent years, there has been increasing interest in the dispute by governments and the people of these nations. Both China and Japan have legitimate and valid reasons as to why the islands should fall under their control. China claims that the Dioyu Islands have been Chinese territory since as far back as the 16th century. In 1895, a militaristic and imperialistic Japan signed the Treaty of Shimonoseki with China after defeating the latter in the First Sino-Japanese War. Among other terms of the treaty, control of the island of Formosa, now known as Taiwan, was to be handed to Japan. Included in this were islands associated with or belonging to Formosa. The Japanese position is that the Senkaku Islands were unclaimed land, which gave Japan full rights to claim the islands and establish administration. Following World War II, 
The Treaty of San Francisco of 1945 made Japan give up control of Formosa as well as islands belonging to it. Ambiguity in the wording of the treaty has led to Japan arguing that the Senkaku Islands were not a part of Formosa when first claimed, and Japan therefore has no obligation to return them to China. However, China states that the islands were in fact taken as part of the 1895 treaty and therefore should have been returned to Chinese control under the Treaty of San Francisco. The islands came under the administration of the United States from 1945 to 1972, at which point they were officially returned to Japan. With such a long and complex history, it is impossible to state exactly who should have legal ownership of the islands. So why have a group of eight uninhabited islands with a combined size of no larger than seven kilometers square provoked such controversy? Several reasons, starting with economics. In 1969, a United Nations report indicated that there may be large oil and gas deposits underneath the seabed around the islands. The islands are also located near important shipping lanes that connect China, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines, Australia, the United States, and other countries. Control of the island also grants larger territory for fishing rights, which is currently ongoing by Chinese and Japanese fishers. The second main reason for control of the islands is territorial expansion. They are located approximately the same distance from China and Japan. Having formal and legal rights to the islands would extend the territorial waters of either nation, which would allow greater control of shipping lanes, easier access to potential natural resource reserves, and more secure fishing grounds. Finally, nationalism plays a large part in the dispute. Both China and Japan have seen protests by citizens claiming that their respective country is the legitimate owner of the islands. Protests have increased in recent years, especially after 2008, some of them turning violent. With both countries militarily and economically dominant in the region and growing on the world stage, any confrontations between them over the islands could have serious repercussions. Stay tuned to UN News for information as the situation develops. This is Ryan Sanson, signing off.